Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, May 29th, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about the state of New York and the 19th Congressional District special election that is set to occur this August. The first true test for the Democratic Party and their ability to turn out their own voters in a general election will be held coinciding with the New York State primaries. Now, this Congressional District is a district that previously was very competitive, and the Democrats actually won it by double digits back in 2020, despite it having a Cook PVI of Republican plus four. Now, there is a brand new congressional district, which 538 rates in this district of having a partisan lean of Republican plus one, the incumbent being Antonio Delgado. Now, he is gone because he is going to be the next lieutenant governor of the state of New York. He was tapped by Governor Kathy Hochul. She decided to choose him because she was the previous lieutenant governor under Andrew Cuomo and, of course, was elevated to the position of governor following his resignation. So she chose this incumbent who arguably probably should not have been chosen given the circumstances of this year, the circumstances of the new congressional district and what this would mean for the Democratic Party. But ultimately, that was not taken into account, so it seems. And as a result, now we are seeing a special election where the Democratic Party is likely going to have to fight a very difficult race to win. Now, the Democrats and the Republicans have their nominees. There is Pat Ryan, who is the Democratic nominee. Now, I've seen pundits and members of the media rate him as a good candidate, someone they would deem to be on par with Antonio Delgado. On the Republican side, you have Mark Molinaro. I believe that's how you say it. Uh, he is here. He is the former or uh, state assemblyman from the 103rd District. He's the Dutchess County executive. So generally speaking, these two candidates uh, have some level of recognition, but neither of them are as district well known as, of course, the incumbent was or the Republican incumbent from 2018, who ultimately uh, isn't going to run in this race. Now, based off of where we are right now, the Cook Political Report rates the race as a toss up, whereas uh, uh, Larry Sabato's crystal ball has it as lean Republican. So far, this isn't good news for the Democratic Party because this is a special election. These ratings are for the special election and not the November election. If we go to the November election, I can show you in just a moment what the rating is right there. But what we have seen thus far within this congressional district is that the Democratic Party is probably the underdogs at this point. The reason being, they just simply aren't popular nationwide. When you take a look at the margin for uh, Antonio Delgado back in 2020, he won here with 55% of the vote to Kyle Van de Water at 43%. This was a 12-point victory for the Democratic Party. It was a very strong victory. It was good for them. And it was arguably showing that this district, while still having a Republican PVI of Republican plus four, according to 538, and a Cook PVI of Republican plus three, that they were willing to elect a Democrat, a Democrat that they seemed to have liked. Now, he actually wasn't here for a substantial period of time. If you go back to 2016, you will find that this 19th district went to the GOP by about 10 points in an open race. It was competitive, but not enough so that the Democratic Party was able to win. John Faso went on to face Antonio Delgado in 2018 and lost by about five percentage points, despite 2018 being a significantly better year for Democrats on the House level. As I showed you, this race went 12 points to the Democratic Party in 2020. So you start to see why removing Delgado from this race made it more difficult for Democrats to retain the majority or makes it more difficult for them to retain the majority in 2022 and why Democrats are fearful about this special election because they know that the same district that was willing to elect a Democrat by 12 also elected a Republican by 10 just four years prior. A 22-point swing in the four years between Donald Trump's first term and Donald Trump's defeat in 2020. And Republicans are hopeful about this race primarily because they know exactly what this race is determined by. Enthusiasm, fundraising, and overall partisanship. When you remove an incumbent, people revert back to voting how they would on standard party lines. For instance, when you take a look at the presidential election results within New York's 19th congressional district, you will find that Joe Biden only won by 1.5%. Again, you're removing any recognizable, at least uh, beside, you know, the presidential level incumbency does matter, but not to the same extent it matters on congressional levels. And you start to see people return to their traditional voting patterns on on the presidential level. Even in 2016, when it technically was an open race per se, Donald Trump defeated Hillary Clinton by about seven points in this district. Joe Biden defeated Donald Trump by two points in this district. Here we have a Democrat winning by upwards of 12 points in the same exact race because people 
liked Antonio Delgado. So this is alarming for the Democratic Party and comforting for the GOP, because we've seen states such as Virginia flip to the Democratic Party, to the Republican Party. We've seen New Jersey almost flip to the Republican Party, decided by two points when Biden won the state by over 15. So when you see a district from the Republican standpoint, when you see a district that was won by 1.5, having a special election in August, you have an immense opportunity to win. And so far, the GOP has not won a singular special election from the Democratic Party on the House level. And while the majority and overwhelming majority, I would say, of the House races that were up for grabs or are up for grabs in these special election timeframes are safe Democratic seats, Democrats won a safe Republican seat back in 2018. That was Representative Connor Lamb. He ran for Senate in Pennsylvania and lost in the primary to John Fetterman. But what Connor Lamb did is he was able to do well in that election because he had the enthusiasm, he had the money, he had the energy on the Democratic Party side. In fact, not only was it not a Trump plus two district, it was actually a Trump plus 20 district. The president, that then being Donald Trump, had won that district by 20 points in the 2016 election, and Connor Lamb flipped it. And then he solidified it in 2018, then ended up winning re-election in 2020. So incumbency matters. The margin and partisanship does matter, but we've seen opposition parties win in extreme cases. And this shows why it's so easy to see how the GOP could end up winning in this district. But Democrats aren't exactly throwing away their chances here. One could say, you know, if Democrats are able to win in a Trump plus 20 district, why isn't this just a safe Republican district if Biden only won here by two? And it's because the Democratic Party has a strong candidate. In addition to that, they're not exactly leaving with an incumbent who left for the wrong reasons. They left because they were going to become the next lieutenant governor of the state. I would also like to say that in terms of partisanship back in 2016 versus now, we did see a swing from Trump to Biden in this district. We didn't exactly have the ability to see that in Pennsylvania. Maybe it would have been more reasonable to expect a Democratic victory then um, than, you know, looking at the shift between then versus 2020, because the old map is no longer implemented. We can't get those numbers. But my point being that where we are right now in the 19th district, we are in a bit of a different circumstance because while it is easy to see how the Democratic Party does fall, it's also easy to see how they could end up putting up a good fight. They did win here by 12 in the last election, and that was an election where Democrats probably should not have won by 12. Reasonably speaking, you're looking at an election year, 2020, where the Democrats did about five points worse on the generic ballot, where they lost 15 races across the United States in the House of Representatives alone, where they barely clinched on to the Senate when they had 10 to 12 competitive seats across the map, and barely won the presidency. While it is a Democratic trifecta, it was by no means a landslide. And for Democrats to outperform their 2018 margin in this district, moving over two years by about seven points, tells you that Democrats did something right then, and it means that they could potentially do something right right now. But I do agree with the characterization from Larry Sabato's crystal ball. I do expect the Republicans to win this district. While Democrats might be hopeful, it's not the likeliest outcome. Realistically speaking, this is a congressional district that now and previously was still a Democratic, uh, a Republican victory hub. You found Republicans winning here up until Antonio Delgado in 2018. And that came with the Democrats winning the popular vote by eight points nationwide. The only way that was feasible was with that victory for the Democrats nationwide. Without it, they would not have flipped this district. Of course, in 2020, it is a testament to the Democratic Party's strength. But keep in mind, the nation disapproves of Biden by about 12 points nationwide. Republicans are up by two when they won in two when Democrats won in 2020 by three, when they won in 2018 by eight. These are significant shifts across the nation that we're seeing, and it's just so hard to see how the Democrats don't lose this congressional district. And what we have seen in years leading up to red waves, blue waves, whatever it might be, is that there typically is a singular or two congressional district special elections where Democrats or Republicans end up winning in areas they never should have. Because they do tell us that the energy two months out, four months out, six months out before the midterms are on the opposition party's side, and I think we will find that in this race. There's a reason why the ratings here are toss-up and lean Republican. If we go back to 2020 and we take a look at this race, look at the characterizations. 
It ranges anywhere from lean D to safe D. But Larry Sabato's crystal ball, which expects it to be a flip for the GOP, had it as likely Dem. Inside Elections, Daily KOS, had it as safe Dem. The Cook Political Report, likely Dem. What you are finding here is that not a single pollster had indicated, or a single reputable source had indicated that this election was going to go to the GOP. And all of them ended up being correct. And that's the same case with this 2022 race. I think it's very possible that these ratings are in fact correct. Now, if you look at the November ratings, you find a very similar number. But based off of where we are right now, Cook, Inside, Elections, and uh, Politico all rated as a toss-up. Larry Sabato uh, and the Crystal Ball holding tight with that lean Republican characterization. Though it did come about three weeks later, it was still a characterization that they seem to be very comfortable in because they know exactly how the midterms are going to go, or at least partially. And it makes a lot of sense. The opposition party typically gains in midterm election years due to unpopularity and a shift in public opinion, approval, etc. And that's exactly what's happening here. I think the Democratic Party definitely fares a better chance in the 19th district in this August election. Uh, So it seems with this presumptive nominee, should he end up in November? Maybe. I think the Democratic Party also might benefit from the fact that not as many voters are going to turn out in this 19th district. And I know that may seem very different from what we traditionally expect within the state of New York. But keep in mind, what we are seeing so far across the nation where turnout being high typically means Democrats do better. In this district, I think the Democratic Party might partially benefit from having a decreased electoral turnout in the 19th district because it gives them uh, a smaller voting group that they need to turn out, meaning that they probably only need to turn out a fraction of the voters than what they needed to turn out in the November election or what need to be turned out. I also think it could go both ways too, that of those who are typically enthused to vote, who do you have? Older voters, white voters, and uh, generally more conservative voters. These are the the same group that routinely votes for the Republican Party, and they typically turn out at very high rates. But the Democratic Party could very well excite potentially a smaller portion, which takes a hard uh, amount of money to do, but you could also do it easier than a larger group. You could do it easier than what you need to do in November. This August election will be more so a pushback against this individual Republican than the Democratic Party trying to employ strategy and messaging that would be applicable and needs to be applicable across the United States. This individual special election will be a test for the Democratic Party. Can they hold on to this race? Because so far, the GOP has had no victories, moral victories, or inconsequential state, district, Senate, House elections that are entirely inconsequential. I mean, you are finding districts and state house races that sure, Republicans might be winning for the first time in 20 years, but that's not exactly an indicator of a red wave alone because we found that Democrats have done better in some areas. For example, in California's recall election, Republicans were swearing up and down that that race was going to be competitive. Well, not only was it not competitive, but Democrats did better in California. Gavin Newsom, being the Democratic Party, did better in California than he did in 2018. What does that tell you? Republicans have had victories in Virginia, but they had a moral victory in New Jersey. But in terms of a House or Senate race on the congressional level, Democrats had Alabama in 2017, they had Pennsylvania in 2018. What do Republicans have in 2020? 21. What did they have in 2020? They lost the Senate in Georgia. They weren't able to flip California or New Jersey. And while they did flip Virginia, that seems to be their real only victory. Because the rest of the individual cases where I've seen races pointed out by pundits or the media as Republican waves, as Republican resurgences, those are individual state districts with maybe 10,000 voters in total. I don't see that the way that I think they see it, because that's all to build a narrative. I do think the Republican Party will still win control of the House. I think they still will win this 19th district in both the special and the November election. But I'm a lot more apprehensive about their ability to do so because of a lot of factors where we are looking at where the state of the Republican Party is right now and the candidate quality in this race. I think the Democrats have nominated the right guy. I think this, if it is to be lost, will not be because Pat Ryan is a bad candidate, but more so because just the voters are not enthused or willing to vote for the Democratic Party for this election. And I think we will see that in August. So first real test for the Democratic Party, August 23rd, 2022. We will be closely watching this race. It will be very interesting. It will be very fun to watch uh, and we'll give the Democratic Party a good idea of how much they're in for a loss in 2022 and what to expect after the midterms. 
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 House Election Analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.